Alright, so that should be recording right now. Uh, again, thanks a lot for uh, taking a bit of time to talk with us about our project here. I uh, just want to get a little bit of administrative stuff out of the way, just to make sure you ha uh, we have this on camera. We just want to make sure that you consent to us uh, uploading this particular video onto our website for uh, people in iGEM for uh, YouTube to uh, watch and see. No, I consent. Alright, fantastic. Um, so, we were just wondering whether uh, you were familiar with uh, how familiar you were with iGEM and synthetic biology in general? Well, I've been actually very curious about uh, synthetic biology as, as a biologist myself, and so uh, I graduated from the University of Guelph uh, back in 1980 in marine biology, actually, but uh, I've been a very interested uh, observer of the evolution of the science and really excited by the potential by, of it. Okay. Um, so how much do you know about our particular project right now? Well, I, I've known of iGEM for some time through OSLI, the Oil Sands Leadership Initiative. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a group of six companies in the oil sands uh, area that uh, have come together to collaborate on new environmental solutions or solutions to environmental problems. And we saw synthetic biology as one of those areas we wanted to explore and that iGEM uh, effort and the competition type approach really intrigued us as we looked at how we might uh, look for creative solutions to problems. All right, um, so just to give a quick rundown of what our project is specifically this year then, uh, we are hoping to create, or we are creating a biosensor and bioreactor system um, that's, able, that's capable of detecting and then being able to break down naphthenic acids, uh, nitrogen contains compounds, catechols, sulfur containing compounds, uh, various toxins that are found in the tailings ponds, and trying to convert them into hydrocarbons uh, that could be extracted in a bioreactor system. Uh, the idea behind the bioreactor system is this is a completely closed system that will take in tailings water. Um, you, can, you can pull off the hydrocarbons off the surface with a belt skimmer, and then um, uh, what happens is that the bacteria in there also have this built-in genetic kill switch um, in it. So in, if there is the unlikely event that they do um, manage to escape the environment of the bioreactor, they actually trigger the kill switch and destroy its own DNA, and so it's incapable of spreading it to uh, native tailings pond organisms. And so what we wanted to see was um, whether you saw this kind of technology as being potentially useful in an oil sand setting. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, the tailings issue has been one of the uh, really big challenges facing the oil sand sector. So. And it's been a combination of challenges. One is how to solidify the tailings, the solid tailings themselves. But in doing that, you liberate water from that uh, clay and sand. And that water can't be returned to surface water because of the contaminants that it picks up during the extraction process. Mm -hmm. uh, it also, in that regard, it limits the uses. And it also complicates the reclamation, ultimately, of, of these uh, tailing storage ponds and we're really keen on new techniques for being able to detoxify that water uh, that would reduce our reclamation costs, accelerate the time frame for reclamation, and also open up new alternative uses of that water, either for industrial, other industrial uses or I, I imagine notionally even uh, to back to uh, surface water. All right, that's great to hear. Um, we were just wondering then if you had any kind of uh, specific concerns about the technology that just, as I just kind of uh, described to you at high level here? Well, I, I think that that notion of having a kill switch as part of uh, how you're thinking of the design is an important one. I know in the area of synthetic biology it does raise uh, concerns and issues about uh, risks uh, of organisms uh, in the environment or what their fate and effects might be this closed loop system to me sounds like a, a big part of the answer, uh, but I think this ability to build in a bit of a safeguard as well is, is important. Um, but I would also just add that I think synthetic biology as a field uh, is just tremendously exciting and uh, we, we're really looking forward to finding even more ways to use synthetic biology. Great. Um, because you have a little bit more experience than we do in the oil sands industry, we were just wondering if you saw any kind of obstacles that we may be facing if we tried to push this into market. Like, are there any kind of 
political things that you're aware of, uh, legal um, things that we must consider before we try and push this to market? Do, are you aware of any of these? Well, I, I'm not uh, fully conversant of how to implement synthetic biology solutions uh, from a, a regulatory perspective, but I, I could easily imagine that we would need to go to the Alberta regulators, the ERCB, and Alberta environment particularly on a permitting level to uh, be able to deploy this commercially or even to pilot it. And uh, that would just require that we have a really good plan as you already have started to work on. But it would also require that we think about the process of scaling it up mm -hmm. and, and what the steps of scale up might be towards commercialization. So uh, it's always have an end in mind and then think very carefully about what, what, what are the steps along that path to get there. Mm -hmm. And so evidently, um, as you said before, because of Osley and because of various um, other groups, do, are you, uh, do you actually kind of see this push for biology as a potential solution for uh, oil science problems that exist out there? Or? Yeah, we're, we're scanning very broadly for any type of solutions that, that exist out there in the world. In fact, even to the point of uh, having conducted some open uh, innovation uh, exercises, uh, we're currently in dialogue with organizations who run competitions globally for new solutions. So, uh, and, and more recently, uh, the organization that's helping to, to really drive that is Canada's Oil Sands Innovation Alliance, or COSIA, and, and it's the Osley members, uh, the si original six Osley members, but complemented by an additional seven other companies, so 13 companies in total. Mm -hmm. And an opportunity that then exists because of the collaboration we're undertaking is when it does come to deployment, we can do it at a very large scale okay. and also share the risks. All right. Um, so lastly, we just wanted to see um, if you could see whether this technology would be useful in any other part of the industry. We may not necessarily need to just target tailings ponds, but if you see something like the actual bitumen extraction process, SAG-D, something like that, do you see a use for that instead? Oh, absolutely. And uh, uh, what I'm intrigued by is I, I think we're in some respects only limited by our own imaginations about uh, how synthetic biology could be adapted in this particular use of uh, synthetic biology could be adapted to uh, create usable hydrocarbons from waste molecules and, and uh, substances. So, uh, you know, I think and we need to set up some capability to really do a, a, a broader brainstorming of uh, how we might adapt this to, to other uh, uses. Great. Well, that's all the primary questions that we really wanted to ask you. Do you have anything for us? Well, I'm just really proud that uh, the University of Calgary has done so well in the competitions, and, and f congratulations to the team and, Thank you. and to the university for the progress you've made and, and for the commitment that you have to find solutions to tough problems. And uh, yeah, so well done and keep up the great work. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, I suppose that means that we are out of time. If we had any, uh, if we had any other uh, questions or concerns, uh, would we be able to email them to you and just see whether you had any oh, input yeah. on it? Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. And uh, so, when do you go to? Uh, is it MIT next? Uh, yes, it is MIT. We're heading there actually next Friday. Okay. Uh, the competition is that weekend. So. And, and the, tell me about the scale of what you've been able to do so far. So, is is that close vessel? Is it, does it exist at a small scale or a bench scale? Right now we do have a prototype that is, um, that is there. It's just this large glass beaker with, um, an, with an air sparger, with a rotor, with a, um, with a belt skimmer, and it's actually capable of picking up high, um, well, oil that we put into a water, in, like water in this chamber here. Um, it's a good first step. We now need to run a couple tests to see whether um, bacteria get picked up by, um, by this belt skimmer. And th so there's a lot of work to be done, but we do have a prototype of both our biosensor and our bioreactor system. And the bugs do do what they're designed to do? Yeah, uh, for the most part. it's We still need to kind of optimize its production a little bit better. Um, right now the amount that we produce is, a, is rather 
minimal, but we, if we can just uh, tweak a couple things of the bacteria, we can actually amp it up a little bit more. So that's some, again, that's something to work on in the future. Yeah. And are you using actual tailings water samples? Uh, yes, we, we actually managed to obtain a couple of tailings water samples because it's really easy to, considering no one really wants to keep them around. Um, so, yeah, there, it's, so, so there you go. What's nice about the system is that we're also using native tailings pond bacteria and trying to engineer those, uh, taking a couple of genes from the native uh, tailings pond bacteria because they're all, they've already been shown that they can survive in tailings ponds, right? Yeah. So uh, that's that's a nice little uh, add-on to our project as well. And how long does it take to actually sequence a uh, DNA strand? Oh, it depends on the company, but for the most part, it does come back within a day or two. It's not it's not very difficult to get a sequence. It's a matter of whether whether you end up getting the right sequence that you need for <laughs> continuing with the project. Because are there errors that happen? Uh, um, it may be errors on our part, it may be errors that happen during the sequencing, but um, I mean nothing's perfect, right? And so it does. And, and the sequencer itself then, that's privately owned? Or? Um, we ha the university does have its own um, sequencing department, but um, it can also be outsourced to um, other companies. There's a number of biotechnology companies that if you just ship them the DNA, they'll sequence it for you and then kind of uh, return the sequence to you online. And so, um, as for privately owned, that is not something I'm specifically aware of, but of, like, certainly there are a lot of companies that do sequencing for you, so I'm assuming it's yeah. private. The technology, I'm certain, is um, public, though, because the machines have to be sold somewhere. And, and your degree, then, is it in genetics? I'm in bioinformatics, actually, so it's a computer science biology, um, using computer science to uh, apply to bio biological problems. Um, the nice thing about the team is that um, iGen tends to bring in a lot of multidisciplinary um, students, and so we have students in biological sciences and engineering, um, in computer science, um, business, and so it, um, it ends up bringing a whole bunch of different perspectives at once. It's, um, I find that a little bit more advantageous than having just a strictly biologically oriented team. Yeah, you're thinking of all, all aspects. And, and remind me, what does iGen stand for? It is the International Genetically Engineered Machines Competition. Um, yeah. Great. Great. Fantastic.